بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ياسين والقرآن الحكيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم إن أصحاب الجنة يوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب الرحيم الله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين To briefly recap what we've covered so far We are in the third passage or portion of the surah which is talk, which is focusing on the life of the hereafter the fact that there is a life after death and what will exactly transpire there and this is the third of the three major themes or concepts that Makkah Qur'an focuses on. Overall, the entire Qur'an focuses on. These are three core aspects of Iman and belief and faith, but especially Makkah Qur'an, early revelation focuses on three areas. Tawheed, oneness of God, oneness of Allah, Risala, prophethood, messengerhood, and third is Akhirah, the life of the hereafter. So this is the third of those three things. Now, in the previous passage, it talked about how the day of judgment, the day of resurrection will commence basically, how it will happen, how everything will transpire. And it talked about everybody being brought back to life, being presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as was promised previously within the surah. And then it finally talks about the perfect justice, the absolute perfect justice that will be, uh, that will be done on that day. And that is that each and every single soul will be rewarded, will be recompensed, will face, will come to terms with exactly that which it had done. Everybody will basically find the investment, they'll be reaping what, those, what they've sown. And so now this part, these four ayat that we're going to study today, ayat number 55 through 58, if you remember the beginning of the surah talked about two types of people. First, first group of people was سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنْذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنْذِرُمْ لَا There was the first group of people was it's, it's equal. It doesn't make a difference. Whether you've warned them or you haven't warned them لا يؤمنون. These people are not going to believe. لَقَدْ حَقَّ الْقَوْلُ عَلَىٰ أَكْثَرِهِمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Allah's decision has been confirmed in regards to the majority of them. Don't be expecting them to believe. That was the first Group. The second group was, but why do you go about and still conducting your message? Why do, should you still be pouring your heart and your soul into this effort, into this cause? <inaudible> that you are warning those people, the one who <inaudible> who follows the reminder. We talked about that in quite a bit of detail. <inaudible> and he fears Rahman, the most merciful, even in absence. When nobody else is around him. فَبَشِرُهُ بِمَغْفِرَةً وَأَجِرُهُ كَرِيمٌ So give the good news of forgiveness and of a most generous, noble reward to this type of person. So now that we're talking about the Akhirah, that was the objective of Risala, Prophethood. You focus on those people. That's why you're doing what you're doing. It's because of those people. Even the passage about Tawheed talked about those people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now it's focusing on what will transpire with those people on the Day of Judgment. What will happen? Because we've talked quite a bit about the group of people who aren't believing. And we're going to see more of what's going to happen with them. But what's going to happen with the good people? The people that followed the reminder. The people that listened to the messengers. The people who believed in Allah. What's going to happen to these people? So in ayah number 55, Allah says, Inna ashab al-jannah. That most definitely, the word inna in the Arabic language is li'izalat is shak It's to remove doubt. It's for emphasis. Most definitely, Ashab al-Jannah, the people of paradise, the companions of Jannah. So it doesn't say Ahl al-Jannah, it says Ashab. The companions of Jannah, the companions of paradise, it shows a more 
uh, it shows that this is where these people belong. That they are the inhabitants, the dwellers, the companions. And it also emphasizes another aspect, the fact that there will be a group of people all hanging out together in Jannah. They're not going to be by themselves. But there will be many companions of Jannah. And so the companions of paradise, Al-Yawm today, remember in the last uh, passage that we studied, the last few ayat we studied as well, we talked about how Al-Yawm is kind of making you visualize. The word Al-Yawm is saying today. Basically this word is telling you to close your eyes for a moment and visualize. Picture like you see the inhabitants in Jannah. Because the description that's about to be given to you is very, very descriptive. It's very imaginative. It, it, it's full of imagery. It's something that's very real. That you can picture in your mind, literally. So the word al is supposed to tell you, listen, just, just think about it, visualize it. Fi shu'ulin fakihun. That these companions of paradise, of Jannah, fi shu'ulin. Fi means in. Shu'ul in the Arabic language means something that, like an indulgence. Something that you indulge in. Something you engage in. Something that when you get involved with it, it kind of, you forget about everything else. Almost like some entertainment, a game, a hobby. Have you ever seen children when they play video games? Or now adults play video games too today, right? Have you seen when people play video games? They, they have no idea what's going on around them. It does, I mean, the house could burn down around them, but they'd still be. They wouldn't stop till you know, the TV caught on fire. Something going on. Right? So, this completely. I mean, this is Texas country, so we, we know football. What happens when the football game is coming on? What happens when the football game? No, it doesn't matter what happens. Football game is coming on, nobody knows what's going on. Because it's football time. So like an indulgence, a hobby. You know, mashallah, let's talk about something a little more productive. You know somebody who likes to read a lot? When they're there just reading their book. You have to call them two, three times. Hey, hello, hey, hey, hey. You have to call them two, three times. They say, what? They don't even realize you were speaking to them. Because it's so engaging, so absorbed in it. So that's called the shul, all right? And while in the life of this world, we're told to try to minimize our indulgence within these type of things and be a little more productive, spiritually productive, socially productive, give more time to family and the people that have rights upon us. But the life, in Jannah, in Jannah, a person will be told that you sacrificed. Like Allah describes the believers in the Quran as what? وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلِ اللَّهِ مُعَلِلُونَ They don't waste their time. They don't indulge in useless things. But on the day of judgment, this person will be told, this believer who's going into Jannah, he will at that time be told, listen, you gave up your indulgences, your hobbies, the things you like to do in order to be a better person, fulfill the rights of people, be more spiritually productive, give more time to Allah and Deen and Islam and the Masjid and the Quran. Today, do whatever you feel like. Kulu washrabu haniya. Eat, drink, just, just live it up. Why? In exchange, bima, the buyers, in exchange of ma asleftum fil ayam al khaliya, what you invested into in the days that have passed. The days that passed before, all the time, the energy, the effort, everything that you invested into it, in exchange of that. So you were focused in the life of the world. You kind of deprived yourself of things you wanted to do in the life of the world. So today, eat, drink, just live it up, do whatever you feel like. Just, just all of your desires will be fulfilled here today. So we're talking about people in Jannah will basically do whatever they feel like doing. They'll just indulge in whatever they want to indulge in. There's no time limits. There's no appointments. There's no alarm clocks and wake up calls and whatever it is that, that, that you know is disturbing to you. Whatever it is that kind of cuts into your time, your relaxation, your entertainment. All that's just gone. Shubul. And the word shubulin, Allah mentions it in the common form, nakira form. What that means is it creates versatility, diversity in the meaning. That for everybody it will be a different, and that's why Allah did not specify what is the shubul. What is it that this person will do to? Because for everybody it's something different. For somebody it might be something, somebody else it's something else, whatever it is. Whatever you want to do. There was a Bedouin man who even came to the Prophet and said, will we be able to farm in Jannah? He said, I don't know why you want to farm, but <laughs> sure. I mean, because he said, you know, Bedouins, that's what we do, it's what we enjoy. 
You know, kind of like when you see somebody who has a hobby of like woodcrafting or something, and they got they, their fingers are all cut up, and they got splinters in their fingers, and they're in their garage, and they're sweating, and I mean, you're like, wow, why is this guy like torturing himself? But that person enjoys it. Sometimes it's just an indulgence. You know, exercise, you know, it's, it's for people like me, it's really problematic, it's troublesome. Some people, they, they, the way they like to enjoy themselves, they like to go run four miles. That's what they enjoy doing. So, a person will be able to indulge in whatever they want to indulge in. Fakihun. Fakihun, this comes from the word. This word basically means when somebody is sort of just, somebody's very happy, joyful. Somebody's just happy. They're laughing and they're smiling and they're kind of, there's a word, I don't, we don't use it too much anymore in common language, but they say giddy. It's just, just really just kind of, just, just energetic. So much energy you just don't know what to do with, just really, really happy, you're really excited. You know when you get so happy, so excited, you're in such a good mood, you're borderline kind of goofy, right? That, that's fucking home. Jolly. Jolly. That's another word we don't use. So, giddy, jolly, all right? So to the point where you just, you just, you don't know how to contain yourself. You're so happy. I'm in mean, such a good time. So these people will be indulging into these hobbies or these things that they want to do. Fuck you, woman. And it's not any type of, uh, they don't feel any, like in this world, even when we engage in some entertainment, we know it ends. We know we have an appointment. There's something hanging over our head. But these people will just be just out of their minds happy, just having such a good time. There'll be nothing else that they'll think of, nothing else that will distract them. And then Allah uses the word fee, the preposition fee, in. Meaning they'll be completely absorbed. They'll never, like I said, mentioned, they'll have no distractions, no appointments, no end times, nothing. They can just do it as long as they want to do it. So, إِنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ اليوم, So these companions of Jannah today, في شغل, in fact, they're completely just absorbed into their hobbies and their entertainment and their fun. And they're having such a good time that you can't even imagine. This is the description of the people, the description of people in Jannah. Now, let me ask you guys another question. Sometimes, okay, so let's just say somebody is having a good time. Somebody is have, you know, uh, indulging in their hobby or in some entertainment. But when somebody does that by themselves, they do it all by themselves. Doesn't that get kind of looked at? Doesn't it get kind of lonely after a while? It gets kind of boring after a little bit. Other people as well don't we kind of consider. Somebody like that could be kind of a loner, kind of a weirdo, right? You like to do things in company. You like to do things with other people. If you just sit by yourself. If you play video games with like four other friends, you're playing FIFA or Madden or something and you're playing with four other friends, that's a good time. But what if you spend three hours playing video games by yourself? Something's wrong with you. That same activity, but something's wrong with you. Like why? You know, why aren't you with other people? So, and, and at the same time, it, get kind of, it gets kind of lonely after a bit. So Allah says that these people of Jannah will not indulge into these activities or into these hobbies and this entertainment, this fun by themselves, rather whom? Them and their spouses, their companions. So they'll have their, their wives or for women, they'll be their husbands will be there. And they'll be sitting in shades. So it's as if they're sitting outside. So it's like the perfect combination, the best of both worlds. They're having fun, they're, do, they're doing whatever they want to do. They have friends and family there with them, having fun with them. They're sitting outside in a beautiful scenery, the gardens of Jannah. The gardens of Jannah are something we can't even imagine. We have little bits and pieces of descriptions. Rivers flowing from these gardens, like literally waterfalls coming out from these gardens. And rivers flowing from beneath them. And the Quran describes they're not just ordinary rivers. Uh, water that never stenches. Rivers of milk that will never go sour. Rivers of the pure wine of Jannah. And rivers of pure honey. And these will be gardens of Jannah that literally the grass, the blades of grass, it will be like diamonds and pearls and rubies and valuable gems and stones. Like as rocks and different things out there. And, and the, the gardens of the trees in Jannah, the Hadith of Bukhari describes the trees of Jannah, that 
that if a person was to ride a horse for a hundred years, he wouldn't be able to cross the shadow of that tree, the shade cast by that tree. These are the gardens of Jannah, the gardens of paradise. So beautiful, so luscious, so amazing. So this person is sitting outdoors in this unbelievable, beautiful scene. All right? But he has a shade over him, the shade of these trees that like we talked about. في ظلال من shades. على الأرائك متكئون. Now usually when we sit outside, let's just say it's a nice, pleasant, beautiful day, and you're sitting outside under the shade of a tree, all right, then maybe you've got to put a sheet down and you're sitting on the ground. So it's nice, but it's not the most comfortable sitting position. Maybe there's a bench or you took a folding chair out there or something. It's not the most comfortable seat. But what about these people? Once again, it's the best of everything. Alal araik. Araik, literally, the best, the best explanation I can give to, give to you based on what we understand, the best contemporary explanation of this I can give to you, it's like a recliner, like a lazy boy. The word araik, arika is the singular of it. It literally describes like a couch or something you sit on, but it's kind of like in between a bed and a couch. Like something that's kind of that lets you sit in a position that is between lying down and sitting up, which is we call what we call a recliner. So imagine having a lazy boy sitting under the shade of a tree on the most beautiful of days, in the most beautiful place you've ever seen, with whatever form of entertainment you like. And not only that, but it's not just one lazy boy, there's like eight lazy boys and all your friends and family are there. It's just unbelievable. You couldn't even dream up a scenario like this. And this is Qur'an that's describing this, people of Jannah to us. They're laying back in their lazy boys, in their recliners, just chilling, having a good time. Lahum fiya Not only that, but then what happens when you're, you know, you're, you're you're indulging in some activity, after a while, what do you feel like having? Some snacks, some popcorn, some chips, some drinks, some coke, something. Well, that's provided as well. Lahum fiya fakia, they'll have fruits. Right then and there, just waiting for them. In fact, another place in the Quran, Surah al haqqa describes how that person, sitting back in his recliner, how he'll eat fruits. Qutufu hadanya. The way it describes it is, so this person sitting back in his recliner, or her recliner, they're sitting back, and also they'll look up at that tree that's casting the shade over them, and they'll see that there's bunches of fruits hanging down. I mean, the fruit is so juicy, so ripe, so amazing, that it's literally hanging down. And they look at that fruit, and they'll be like, that looks good. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Daniyatun, it'll come closer. I mean, this person won't even have to get up to eat this food or grab this food or to eat this food. The tree will literally bend down all the way to the mouth of the person. He'll eat the fruit and he'll go up. And when he's feel like anymore, he'll come back down, he'll eat it and he'll go back up. It's all automated. It's all taken care of. Lahum fiha fakiha. You know, what was that store that everybody likes to... Uh, there was a store that has all the cool devices and gadgets. Everybody would like spend a lot of time there, especially guys, brothers. Brookstone. Brookstone now it's called, before it used to be called something else. But you know, you see all those automated little devices and the recliners and the machines. And you go in there and you get so fascinated. You're so amazed. I mean, this stuff we see, the best of the best of what we've seen or experienced in this world doesn't even compare. It doesn't hold a candle to the luxury and the amazement that is waiting for these people of Jannah. And Allah basically opens a wide open. He says, this was just a little preview. The reality of his, it is what? For them, exclusively for them. Exclusively for them, people of Jannah. People who followed the reminder. People who feared their Lord even in absence. Exclusively for them, مَيَدْدَعُونَ is whatever they could possibly ever ask for. يَدْعُونَ means to ask. To call out. Yadda'un is from Bab Ifti'ab. It's, it's the exaggerated form. It means whatever they could ever ask for. And another uh, opinion, a more minority opinion amongst Mufassirun from a grammatical perspective is it actually comes from the root of the verb, which means to claim something. Whatever they could claim. And the, the scholars explain that what, that what that refers to is that they won't even have to verbalize what they want. When you ask for something, you call out for something, you speak it. You verbalize it, I'd like this, please. Or I'd like that. I want that right now. 
They won't even have to do that much. They won't even have to verbalize. Then the ayah of Surah Fusila details this that I mentioned before. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ Whatever your heart, your soul's desire will be given to you. Mean that person won't even have to speak it. He'll just think it. He'll just feel like it. And poof, it's right there. Instantaneously, it's right there. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا لَهُمْ فِيهَا فَاكِهَا They'll get whatever they desire, whatever they want, whatever they could ever ask for. Anything, everything, it'll be made available to them, exclusively to them. Salam. Salam. They'll be given salam. Peace and safety. The word salam means peace and safety. So it's like a proclamation, an announcement's being made. Peace and safety. Salam. It's being showered down upon you. It's being rained down upon these people. Salam. And the thing is, again, this word salam, when is it in its common form? It means peace and safety of every type, of all angles, for all of eternity, forever and ever, is upon these people, being showered, rained down upon these people. Qawla. And this is a word, this word salam, that's being proclaimed to them, given to them, like a congratulations. Salam. Who is this coming from? The angels, the messengers. No, this is coming from Allah Himself. Qawlan. This is a word. Min from who? Ar-Rabbil Rahim. Rabb means the one, who, the, the Lord, the Master, the one who created, the one who provides and sustains and maintains and guides and protects. So He's the one who created you, He's the one who provided to you, He's the one who sustained you, maintained you, He's the one who gave you this guidance that allowed you to be here today, He's the one who forgave your sins, and He's the one who entered you into Jannah without any reckoning, and He's the one who has given you this unbelievable luxury in Jannah that you will enjoy for all of eternity. The word Rabb itself describes it. And that's why Surah Al-A'raf, it describes when the people of Jannah go to Jannah, what will they say? Alhamdulillahi ladhi hadana lihada. All praise, that at all times, praise is deserving and worthy for who? The one who guided us to this point. وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَهْتَدِي لَوْلَا أَنْ هَدَانَ اللَّهِ We couldn't have gotten here ourselves if Allah had not given us the guidance to get here. So this is a proclamation, this is a word from Ar-Rab, who is Ar-Rahim. Constantly merciful. His mercy transcends, cannot be contained by any time, by any place. It transcends all time and all places. He was merciful to you in the life. He was merciful to you before you were even created. He was merciful to you when you were in the wombs of your mothers, when you were given birth to, when you were a small infant who couldn't even roll over on his own, who couldn't do anything for himself. And He gave you parents that cared for you. He was merciful to you when you were a child, you were an adult, you were an old person, you died, you went in your grave, you were resurrected on the Day of Judgment, you were entered into Jannah, and He's even merciful to you today. Because He's given you all of everything that you have. Salam and qawla bin Rabbi Rahim. Salam, peace and safety being showered on these people. This is a proclamation, a word from ar rabb the Lord and the Master, who is ultimately, continuously, constantly merciful. And this is the end of this passage, inshallah. Uh, tomorrow, we, inshallah, start from ayah number 59. May Allah give us the ability to practice everything we've said and heard, and may Allah make us from the people of Jannah. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallah wa bihamdihi, nashahu la ilaha illa, nashahu la ilaha illa, nashahu la ilaha illa, nashahu la ilaha illa,